Good morning, Hope Church. It's great to see you all this morning. Let's all stand. I want to welcome you here at this uh, place that uh, God's presence is always at. Amen. I want to welcome the ones that are here online. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to come again to, uh, to worship you with one voice, to learn more about you and your word. Lord, everything that we do is for you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We praise you, Jesus. testify this morning if I'm not dead you're not done greater things are still to come if I'm not dead you're not done amen greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead you're not done greater things are still to come oh I if I'm not dead, you're not done. The greater things are still to come. Who I believe. This is my testimony from death to life. Cruz Grace rewrote my story. I'll test. Come on, church. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. From death to life, cause Christ rewrote my story. I'm justified by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Amen. How many of you believe that this morning? Jesus came to earth to save us, amen? Hallelujah. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. And if I'm not dead, you're not done. 
greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Hallelujah. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony this is my testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good and all the time. Amen. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kings will bow down. Oh, and every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so open up the gates, make way before the king of kings. Hallelujah. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Hallelujah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Hallelujah! Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow. Be Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.
How many believe that he is the way maker? Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, yes Lord, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, eternal lives of you, Lord. You're great, greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we worship you, Lord, for all who you are, Lord. stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working, you never stop. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
us. That is who you are, Lord. You're our way maker, Lord. You are a healer, our forgiver. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. We love you, Lord. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Come on. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Amen. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. For you are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. For you are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. Oh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Yes, Lord. That is who you are. 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 For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. See that again. For you are way maker. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who Sing again. That is who you are, Lord. That is who you are, my Jesus. That is who you are. That is who you are. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You're so good, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord.
go back to the beginning. No. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be. As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory appears. As you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again, oh Jesus? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again, oh Jesus? worship you, Lord. You're here in this place. Hallelujah. Feel your presence, Lord. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit. Dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute, and not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit. Dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute, but not for a minute. Was I forsaken? Amen. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. The come Holy Spirit. Drive bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. 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 Not for a minute, oh, not for a minute. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, drive bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. 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 Yes. I'm not enough. 
enough unless you come will you meet me here again oh Jesus cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again oh Jesus Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. You are so great, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. Hallelujah! The Lord is in this place. And not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute. Hallelujah. The Lord is in this place. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Our sacrifice. Jesus, the Lord is in this place, the Lord is in this place, not for a minute was I you come will you meet me here again oh Lord cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again I'm not enough unless you come you meet me here again Cause all I want Is all you are Will you meet me here again One more time, I'm not enough I'm not enough Unless you come Will you meet me here again, oh Lord? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Hallelujah. Amen, church. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for all that you have done, Lord, and all that you have planned in the future. You are so great and greatly to be praised. So come, Lord, we love you, Jesus. You are so great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We feel your presence this morning. You are here, Lord. You are here in this place, pouring your spirit out. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. If you want to continue to meet the Lord in this moment, I encourage you, if you can, let's just take a knee together. Let's not worry about coming up to the altar. Let's just meet him right where we're at. And if you struggle getting down your knees or maybe the struggle is getting back up, I just encourage you to raise both your hands right in your seat, right where we're at. Let's just meet God for a moment. so great we worship you Lord we love you Lord Church, the presence of God is so powerful and strong in this place today. I just encourage you, open up your heart. Let God speak to you. He has a word for us today. There's something that God wants to do this morning. I don't know if you guys can feel it, but the presence of God is so strong in this place. I just encourage you, open your heart. Be receptive to what God has to say to you today. He's got something for you. Just be open. receive, Lord. We receive what you have for us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So I really wanted to kind of start from the beginning and, and today. I wanted to kind of give a glimpse so, so you have an idea of who God is. And so Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, scripture moving back and forth. You can follow along, but uh, they'll be up on the screen. I don't have a specific scripture, really, today um, to base on. I'm, ch I'm just kind of going with it. And uh, so I'm going to be going through a lot of scriptures throughout the Bible. So if you could follow along, that would be great. Um, we will have them up here. So Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. When we see God as the creator, what comes to mind? All right, so we see God creating trees. We see God created the plants. We see God creating the animals. We see God creating Adam and Eve. We see God creating clouds. We see God creating the rain. We see God, God created all this other stuff. But did you ever think about God created me. He created you. Have you ever thought about that? It's something that we don't really focus on because we're just like, oh, I'm, I'm in the, oh, I just love being out in the mountains. I love being out in the woods. I love just being out in nature, God's creation. Did you know that when you wake up in the morning, you're in the midst of God's creation, the best creation, his prized creation? That is God. God created us. In Psalm 139, 13, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. From the beginning, he created you. He knit you. He put you together. Every single one of us, he molded us together in our mother's womb. We are here. 
because of God. He is the ultimate being, the only holy one. Amen? So I wanted you to really understand who God is. God is the God of creation. God is the God of love. God is the God of compassion. God is the God of grace. God is the God of mercy, of justice, and of judgment. God is a God of judgment. We all hear about how much God is love. God is love. God loves you. God loves you. But we don't really hear much about the judgment side of God. Because he is the ultimate judge. Growing up, I learned, I, I heard a lot of the uh, fire and brimstone preaching. The, amen, come on, you're going to hell because you are, you are a sinner. That's what I grew up with. I grew up in that kind of Pentecostal environment, always hearing it. But as I grew up, I heard less and less and less still preaching, but it, turned, it seems to be kind of going more into God is love. And we're forgetting about sin. We're forgetting about the judgment to come. And I'm wondering if that is why we have some issues in the world. Well, I think I really believe that's why we have issues in the world a lot more. Because ever since we started kind of declining our sin, sin has gone up. Declining our sin preaching, our sin teaching, sin has gone up. People are to the point now that living in sin is actually good. That is how our world sees sin. Fun and good. Yes, it is fun. It's not good. 50, 60, my, grandpa, my grandparents always said, it's like, oh, oh yeah, growing up, I mean, you always heard about God. We always prayed in schools and everything. 1962, school prayer, Bible reading, gone. And what happened after that? School shootings, drugs, alcohol addictions in schools. And it's not just high school. Oh, we're going to go to party. We're going to have fun. We're going to go to a party. It's not just high school. There are kids who are eight, nine years old today in elementary school that's getting drunk. That's smoking they're doing drugs. It's because we are not preaching what sin is. Because a lot of times we are afraid to say something because we don't want to be hated. We, we want people to like us. I'm sorry, I like people to like me. Um, at work, I got into a conversation while we were working. Somebody asked me a question, so I have authorization to tell you. I told them the truth. He looked shocked. He's like, you really said that? He's like, yes, I did. It is a sin. He's like, oh, wow. He's like, I'll show you in the Bible. I will list all these sins. And the Bible doesn't list every single sin or specifically everything. But I would say it's a sin. It's not according to God's word. It's a sin. If it's against God, it's a sin. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I pray that through this message that it will it'll awaken us in our spirits. The, the, the ones that are here, the ones that are online. And it will also help teach us how to go out and share and spread your gospel, Lord. Amen. So, <laughs> um, I want to kind of do a thing teaching and preaching i don't know where your hearts are i don't i don't really know what enters only god knows and you know where your hearts stand but i want to go through the gospel um but i want to start with the commandments do you have what it takes to make it to heaven Let's find out. God put a plan in the Bible. Let's find out if we have what it takes to make it to heaven. So Exodus 20, verse 1 through 17, 
We're not going to read the whole passage. We're just going to uh, take a few bits and pieces out. It's the Ten Commandments. I just wanted to remind you where they were, Exodus 20. But I want to dive into a few of these to find out where we stand as, as humans. I, I don't want to see a show of hands. I'm going to be asking some questions, but I do not want to see a show of hands because this, this is between you and God. I know things are going to be like, whoa. Um, but that's God. He's a whoa God. Um, because when, when God shows you something, it's like, whoa. <laughs> I love that too. I can read the Bible. I've read the Bible through, but every time I read it, I, whoa, I didn't realize that was in there. Every single time God shows me something new. Read the Bible. Read it all the way through again and again and again. Oh my goodness, you'll learn so much about God. You'll grow more in love with God doing that. It's, it's awesome. So do you think you are a good person? Do I think I'm a good person? If so, by whose standards do you think you are good? Are you good in your own standards or are you good in God's standards? God put standards together for holiness in the Bible. The Hebrews had to follow them. You saw where that went. It didn't work very well. In all reality, <laughs> Hitler thought he was a good man. He thought he was doing good. A lot of people think, a lot of people know, yeah, Hitler was bad. He was evil, an evil man. But if you actually listen to some of his uh, speeches and some of the things that he believed, he truly believed that he was doing the right thing. He believed that he was good. <laughs> we know he wasn't. But that's what he thought. He thought he was a really good man. We need to look into the commandments to see if we can pass God's law test. That's the first step. God's law test. Let's see if we can do that. Because these are his basis for holiness, for righteousness. Exodus 20 verse 7 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Have you ever done that? I know I have. I've done it a lot. Strike one. Just say, just using God instead of praying to him, use him as a curse word. We've all done it. I can guarantee you we've all done it. Because we've just broken the third commandment. That's one down. That's just one commandment we've already broken. Exodus 20, 13. You shall not murder. Have any of you killed somebody? Think, no, I haven't killed anybody. No, I haven't physically killed anybody. But 1 John 3, 15 says, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. When we hate somebody, when we are so angry with them and just can't stand them, we are murdering them in our hearts. That is what God sees. Jesus is like, look, this is murder, but this over here, hating your brother, your sister, anyone is also murder in your heart. So if you've ever hated somebody, just wanting them gone, Oh, I can't stand that person. Anger rages up. You just murdered them in your heart. Boom. Strike two. You failed another commandment. Ouch. Well, that's two out of ten. I'm not going through all the commandments. I'm just going to go through a few of them. But we already failed. Exodus 20, 14. You should not commit adultery. <laughs> Whoa. Have you ever committed adultery? Um, so adultery, in the definition of it that I see it, and what a lot of people have um, used the definition on, is being with somebody that you are not married to. Sleeping with somebody you are not married to. Lusting after somebody you are not married to. That's premarital sex. That is being with somebody that's not your spouse. 
That's what we see as adultery. But Matthew, 20, Matthew 5, 27, 28 says, You have heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, this is Jesus, red letter day. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That goes both ways. Men, if you have, you're either single, married, you're dating, whatever. If you look at another woman with lust, then I'm not saying, wow, she's pretty. Because, yeah, I see a lot of pretty women here. Awesome. But it goes beyond that. It is like, wow. Wow, she is just gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. Oh my goodness. You start that thought process of lust starts. That's our minds. That's the minds of men. It's unfortunately that's what happens. Satan knows that. So he will make sure that he puts certain women in your path when you're walking around, when you're driving, when you're at work. He will do that. It also goes the other way. Women. Towards men. You look at another guy and like, wow, he's handsome. My wife does that. Like, she, there's a couple actors like, yeah, he's, he's really handsome. He's, he's, uh, he's aged very well. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. But do you lust after? Do you really look at them? Really focus in lust. That is committing adultery. Whether you're single, you're dating, you're married, whatever, that's committing adultery in your heart. That's what Jesus said. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what Jesus said. That's it. That is Jesus. Yes, the boss. <laughs> Ultimate judge. Yes, he is. Exodus 20:15. you shall not steal. Yeah, I haven't stole anything. No matter the value, a pencil, a pen, a piece of paper that you didn't purchase or wasn't given to you. How about an employer's time? That's a, that's a, a deep stuff there. Have you ever stolen your employer's time? They are paying you to do a specific job. Are you doing that specific job? Or are you doing something else? We had somebody I used to work with. Uh, he didn't, unfortunately, stick around too long. Um, but he was, that's what he did. Uh, he was hourly. So I'm an I'm a, I'm a auto technician. And so I get paid by the cars. So if I have no cars, I don't get paid. Um, but this individual was the oil change guy, rotate guy. He, does, uh, he gets paid hourly. So they're paying him no matter if he has a car or not. Car comes in. Oh, I got to use the restroom. It's been about 10, 15 minutes in the restroom. On his phone, I guess. I don't know. I'm not looking. But (laughs) I can just assume he's 10, 15 minutes. He comes out. The other guys already did the car. And they're already driving it away. He got out of it. That's stealing from your employer. You're a thief. Deep words. And this is deep stuff. You're a thief if you do that. And I'm not saying that I've never done that. I, I got to say, yes, I've, I've broken these commandments. I guarantee you I've broken these commandments. Let's do one more. Have you ever told a lie in your life? Because I know if you say no, that you just lied. <laughs> because when you're four, five, six, seven, eight years old, you're going to lie because you don't want to get in trouble. Now, if you've had the perfect child... And they always uh, gave you information, kind of looking at Caleb. He always, it was great. So when, we, when he did something, he would tattle on himself. Thank you, God, for giving us one of those kind of sons. <laughs> but if you, if you have ever lied, because I know you have, you, 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 you just broken another commandment. There was no such thing as a white lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. That's just how it is. So this is God explaining to us the requirements for holiness, for eternal life, for righteousness. That's his his beginning requirements. 
Because in the New Testament, Jesus is like, uh, the, the man came up to him and it's like, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus is like, follow commandments. Like, oh, that's it? Okay. Yeah, I did that. Good. Now do this. Sell everything you have and follow me. <laughs> nope, I'm too rich. I can't do that. Did you know that the Ten Commandments are all, Jesus summed them up. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because every single commandment that he posted is either, if you break it, it's against God, or it's against your neighbor. The people sitting next to you, the people who live next to you, the people in the same town, the people in the different country. They're your neighbors. So this is God's requirements for a righteous life to enter heaven. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 64, 6, that all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Do you have any idea what Isaiah actually said there? Because I bet some of you might not. I didn't until I got to studying this stuff a couple, uh, several years ago when I was in college. I never really understood. It's like filthy rags, okay, they're just muddy. No. So the, I'm going to give you a little lesson. No, I do not know Hebrew. Um, but I had to look this up. Blue Lever Bible. Gotta love it. Ada is a Hebrew word for filthy. Filthy rags. They're actually, he's used menstrual rags. Rags when women on their period. It's because back in the day, they didn't have what we have now. But back in the day, they had to use rags. And... When we talked about this, when we talk about this, you are considered unclean if you were on your period. Look at the woman that Pastor Chris has talked about several times in the past few weeks. The woman with the issue of blood. She, for 12 years, she was unclean. She couldn't go anywhere. If she was out and about, she had to cover herself and shout, unclean, unclean, so everybody won't, won't touch her. She couldn't go into the synagogue. She couldn't go to worship with everybody else for 12 years. This is serious stuff. So when Isaiah says this, he means it. It is bad. You are so unclean that you cannot even enter my presence. That's how our righteousness is. There's no way you can enter his presence. It is impossible. There's absolutely no way we cannot do it ourselves. So I want you to picture this. You're in a courtroom, okay? You're in a courtroom and God is sitting at the judge seat. And you've got the prosecuting attorney Satan. If we are unclean, unworthy, unrighteous people that we are, Satan would have a field day with us. Come on. You know that. Satan is going to take every single thing. He writes down every single sin that you have committed in your entire life. And he rewinds it and plays it over and over and over again and over again and over again. That's what he's doing. He's telling God, God, this person did this, 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 this. Go on. And what are you going to do there? Just got to sit there and take it because you know he's right. There is nothing you can do. No excuses. Nothing you can do. Period. There is just, you can say, oh, but, 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 nope. Satan's like, Sit down and shut up because you have no say in this. That's what he'll say. I've seen court shows. <laughs> I know what happens in court on TV. <laughs> but that's what Satan is doing. He is telling God every single thing that you have done. He is going to bury you in your sins. And he is happy about it. He is smiling about it. He's laughing at you because... You are 
his trophy. That's what you are. He doesn't care about you. He wants you because I've got another trophy that God doesn't have. Ha ha. That's Satan's job. There's nothing you can do to argue against him. You need to pay for your crimes. Just like in regular court, you have to pay for it. The judge will sentence you. God will sentence you for your sins. You follow me? Where are you going? A righteous judge will punish you for your sins, for your crimes. A righteous judge, a good judge. God is a good, righteous judge. The only good, righteous judge in the universe. You can have some good, pretty good judges here and there, but nobody is good and righteous as God. God is the only righteous judge. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away. <laughs> his presence is amazing if the earth and sky fled away. I mean, wow. No place was found for them. They couldn't hide because that's how big God is. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. Ouch. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. God's the judge. He's sending down judgment because of what they've done, what death and Hades has done. The death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Your name's not written in the book of life? You're done. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If it's not written in there, you go to hell. Wow. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Because you could tell a judge, like, judge, yes, I murdered these three people, but look, I gave to the, uh, to the Salvation Army last week. Oh, okay. Well, then you're good. You're forgiven. Nah, it doesn't work that way. You still got to pay for your crimes. And the payment is death. The payment of sin is death. That's what's going to happen. Hell. I don't want to go there. I know nobody wants to go there. I know they sing songs of rock songs. They say, oh, I, I can't wait to go to hell party. <laughs> no, that ain't going to happen. Darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know what that is. The weeping are the ones who is crying. It's like, why didn't I listen? I should have listened. I can't believe those pastors, those preachers, those, those friends of mine, they told me, but I didn't. I'm, I'm, I can't believe it. Then you got the gnashes of teeth, the ones who hate God, who hate everything. They'll be gnashing their teeth. I hate you, God. I can't believe you sent me down here. You know, you sent yourself. Yes, God put you there, but in all reality, you put yourself there because of your sins, because you did not repent. So, you're going to hell. That's it. It's over. Eternity to hell. Now what? You're done. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. When you give your life to Christ, when you repent, when you give your all to him, you put your faith and trust in him, you're saved. Boom. Right then and there. 
You don't have a long process of being saved. It is right there. You repent. You say, God, I am so sorry that I am a sinner. I am so sorry that I had that life. Save me. I put my faith, my trust, my life into you, into your hands. Boom. You are saved. That is it. It's all you need to do. When you do that, the defense attorney comes up. Jesus Christ. He goes up. And he doesn't say judge. No, he says father. Father, I pay for his crimes with my life. I pay for his crimes. He doesn't need to pay for it. Judge comes to you and be like, you're free. There you go. All the stuff that's in the past is gone. It's over. Done with. You don't have to worry about hell anymore. You don't have to be worrying about getting judged like that anymore. Our judgment will be the crown of life. He will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You'll get the crown. You'll walk at Jesus' feet. And you'll lay it at his feet. Like this is for you, Lord. Because I did this for you. You are the only one holy and just to deserve it. It is free. It's a free gift. It is. You don't got to do anything but repent. So I was in a conversation a couple years ago. um, And I think the individual kind of got confused. I think the group of people I was in kind of got confused when I was saying it. Because I, I mentioned, and please just come and follow along. Um, I said, becoming a Christian is easy. I never said being a Christian is easy. I said becoming a Christian is easy. Becoming a Christian, all you need to do is know that you're a sinner. Realize that and pray. That's it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to try to follow the Ten Commandments anymore. Because once you're a Christian, you're going to follow them anyway. And we're going to fail. And we'll follow them again. We'll fail. Because we want want to live a holy life. But there's forgiveness. You don't live in that sin anymore. Just receive the free, F-R-E-E. That spells free. Amen? Amen? That's a free gift that Jesus gave us. I gave my life so I can be with you. So this song, uh, there's some lyrics, says, uh, you, you didn't want heaven without us. <sighs> heaven down. He wanted us with him so bad that he came and died for us. And rose again so we can be saved we can be with him and have eternal life with him that is how much God loved us he did that yes God's the judge he is the only righteous judge you repent you are free by no work of your own you are free If everybody can uh, bow your heads, close your eyes. Amos, could you come up? I don't, I really don't know where your hearts are. Uh, I don't know your hearts. I don't know if you've ever truly given your heart to Christ, heart and life. If you've ever truly repented and put your faith and trust in Jesus. I don't know. I hope you did. But if you didn't, I want you to have that opportunity. It doesn't take much at all to repent, to realize we are all sinners. We need to repent. We need to accept that free gift that Jesus gave us. 
He handed it to us. He just says, here, take it. Please take it. That, that, that's what Jesus is saying right now. Please take my free gift. I did all this for you. I spent my life giving to you. I went through the worst thing ever for you. Whether you're here, you're online, I, it, 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 it all pertains to every single one of us. Every single one of us. If you have never repented, truly repented of your sins, I want you, I, I, I want you to. There's nothing to be afraid of. The ones who have already repented have already been there. They've done it. They've already slipped their hand up. They've already prayed the prayer. They've been where you are right now. I have. I am standing here right now because of what Jesus did for me. I don't want anyone to go to hell. No one. That's why... That's why I really wanted to put this today. I really wanted to talk about this today. I want to preach it today. Because I don't want any of you to go to hell. If you have never truly repented, please slip your hand up. Make it an outward expression to God. It's to God. Nobody's looking around. It is to God. And only God. It's all you need to do. All you need to do is say, God, I'm a sinner. I repent. Please forgive me. I am so sorry. I want to live for you and you alone. Online, this, this comes to you too. God knows your hearts. God sees you. If you want to repent, it's all it takes. It's all it takes. God loves you so much that he gave his only son. All you need to do is believe in him. And you will have eternal life. That's forever and ever and ever and ever with our holy God. No more wars. No more sickness, no more death, no more sin, no more pain. But we have to come with an open heart to God. He knows your sins. He wants you to confess them. Say, God, I'm sorry for everything that I've done in the past. That's, what he, that's all he wants from us is to give our lives to Him. He can do so much. Lord, for the ones who want to repent this morning, I pray for them. I pray for their hearts that they would open them up. I want everybody to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. Please forgive me. Take my sins away. Wash them. Wash me white as snow. I give my hearts to you. Teach me to love you, Jesus. So I can grow in you. And I can be the one that you send to bring even more people to you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.
Thank you so much for watching our video today. We want to hear from you, so feel free to put in a comment, like, and subscribe, and also go check out our social media pages. Hope to hear from you soon.